sure if um, I'm not sure if Lucas will make it. That's the beauty about Traveler is you can kind of, you know, you don't need a whole lot of players, but you can. You can handle a lot of players if you want. Yeah. You can go both ways. Yeah, it, it's capable of, of handling large groups. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, this is the one where we're probably going into some extreme violence, right? Um, yeah, this is the one probably not. Well, I mean, I don't know. There's some potential there, but uh, um, for the most part... Um, I don't know. Um, it just depends on how it goes, I guess. Yeah, yeah it, it's really going to It's really gonna depend. I mean, this, this particular adventure... Um, I've run it once before, and they went with extreme violence, of course. Oh. But um, <laughs> that wasn't really the best course of action. And uh, it's not like, well, I mean, I'll, I'll just come out and say it. In my opinion, I don't think that, that going the course of extreme violence um, really nets you anything. Um, because of the situation overall and you, you'll you'll find out more about that but um, um this doesn't seem like the kind of party that will promote a lot of it, combat unless it just happens that way right i mean there, there are certain there are certain circumstances where you don't have any other choice and that of course is likely to come up but um but the overall um, situation is it's not going to it's not going to give you the winning circumstances right our Wednesday night group has been doing great with grenades oh yeah yeah they... I, I mean uh, I've never seen them be successful like this on anything I know right uh, yeah, someone's going to drop. I mean, I'm just, I know it's going to happen, but uh, it's fun. It's fun going, all right, let's just hand out some grenades or let's throw some grenades. And uh, <laughs> but been working out really good. I was about to throw a plasma grenade until everybody got into the, the fray there. Uh, I was just going to throw that. And then, and, and then I was like, okay, well, maybe an armored car or something was going. But the, the armored car showed up as we were already leaving. And. Yeah, yeah, but if it would have started shooting that auto cannon in our direction, I damn straight would have thrown that damn plasma <laughs> grenade at that auto car. Hello, Will. Hello, how are you? I'm good. Did you have a good Thanksgiving? I did. It was a lot of fun. Excellent. Really good food. Yeah, yeah, I've been, uh, I feel like I'm in a food coma. Is, uh... <laughs> I feel like I should be in bed. <laughs> yeah. Worn out, man. Well, when you gain weight and your doctor or your wife or whoever complains about it, uh, my favorite comeback is are you really living bad if you're gaining weight? Right, right. And, you know, we can take the whole scope of human history, and, and nobody was really living bad that got fat. I mean, they ate. <laughs> Uh, so it looks like it'll be the three of you guys until JT gets here. He said he was probably going to be a little bit late. His uh, last message I got earlier was that his plane had just set down. So <clears throat> he's on his way home as we speak. Uh, so welcome to Deep Night Revelation. We'll be picking up where we left off last week. Um, these guys jumped out into... Uh, the black into the great rift uh, into a blank hex um, crossing their fingers that there was the uh, reported fuel depot there um, because if there isn't they have no way of refueling and it's going to be 
a very, very long walk <laughs> to get back to civilization. Uh, before we get started, we'd like to thank a friend of the Greenwater Guild Hall. Uh, none of these are sponsorships or partnerships of any kind. They are just products that we really like. And tonight, we would like to thank Dogmite Games. Uh, Dogmite Games makes beautiful wood accessories for your tabletop role-playing games, such as wood, wooden uh, Game Master screens. They've got dice trays, dice vaults, um, dice towers. Um, they've got this really cool thing, uh, the Player Vault. Uh, definitely should check that out. Um, all of their products can be customized, <clears throat> and if you order something that's customized, it usually ships within six to eight weeks. Um, but they have a lot of stuff that's already in stock, and that will usually ship within one to two business days. Uh, the deadline for if you're ordering customized items and you're you're wanting it here by Christmas, that ship has kind of already sailed. I mean, you can try it, but. There's no guarantee that it'll be here in time for the holidays. Um, so just a heads up, don't be disappointed if that's the case. Um, but we do have a 10% off uh, discount available to anybody. It's good for everything on their site. And the uh, if you put stuff into your cart and then at checkout use the code FRIEND in all capital letters, uh, that will get you 10% off. If you're a fan of our Friday Night Traveler games. Uh, we do have a web page via Obsidian Portal. <clears throat> the adventure log in the page is written in the manner of uh, news articles, and it's kind of detailing um, general news around the area. Um, and it may or may not be a um, directly related. Some of the stuff is hooks um, that it's possible for them to. Um, either follow up on or it is in some way roundabout related to what they're doing if you like the content please go to the front page and give us a thumbs up we do like to see those fan likes and we hope you enjoy so um i guess we will just get right into it uh, you've been in jump space for a week um and you actually uh because the <clears throat> you guys did such a good job on astrogation well uh uh, Jack did such a good job on astrogation <clears throat> and they such a great job on the um, engineering J drive check that you guys um, are the the alarm is going off that you're going to be exiting jump about five hours early um, and During the the jump week uh, would it be okay if I use telepathy on the crew to uh to help stave off the edginess of being cramped up. I mean, I, I you know, yeah. just to kind of raise the morale. I mean, if we're going into deep space, I'm thinking right here at the beginning, I want to try to uh, psionically combat, you know, space lunacy or whatever, just from long periods of time without being on a planet. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, I don't know how well telepathy is going to be for that um Tel telepathy telepathy yeah, yeah you it's could... putting moods and feelings on people yeah you so you kind of uh use telepathy to try and um calm down the anxiety um it overall is it going to be it's better than it than it would be um but it's not going to go away entirely i mean even for you uh because right. uh you know, you it, it, just the nature of the situation. You don't know. Um, you know what you've been told and what the report says, but regardless, yeah. looking at the star map, it is still empty space on the map. Yeah. And so uh, there is a high level of anxiety. And so, like I said, you guys, the alarm goes off, and you'll pop up onto the bridge, and um, and you come out of out of jump. And <clears throat> it takes a moment, and then your passive sensors um, start to bring in data. And looking out the window, <clears throat> I mean, visually, you see nothing there's there's absolutely nothing 
that's not entirely unusual uh, but your passive sensors are detecting over here at the uh, very long range they are detecting what appears to be a debris field and so that's likely the fuel dump or we hope that's the fuel dump i guess well i, I mean like i said like i said what's coming what's back, coming back on the passive sensors is that it it looks like a debris i mean it looks like a debris field um so you should really you should hope really that that's, hope that that's the uh the uh fuel depot, fuel depot. But, but nothing else nothing that you're seeing shows that it would be like a belt of any kind and it's it's not big enough to be considered an asteroid belt but there seems to be a lot of uh stuff floating around out here is there any comms chatter or anything going on no how far how, how, into it how far away is that there it is we weren't sure if Lucas was going to make it. Oh, yeah. So, in, ter <laughs> in, in terms of distance, I'm trying to figure out, like, is this thousands of kilometers? Or, I mean... Uh, so, very long range would be... Yeah, you're, you're looking at about 25,000 kilometers. Okay. I think we should head into it and see what we find. Yeah, or head toward it. Well, anyway. I mean, right now, all you're getting, you're, all of your information is coming from passive sensors. You can do a much more detailed scan by going active. Yeah, let's, uh, do you want to do that? Or Yes, or... I think we should active scan. I mean, we just jumped in here. Anybody that's around this system saw us leave jump space. There's no reason not to do an active scan. I just know that I'm probably not your sensors guy. Is all no, I have I, is comms. I think I am. I'm the sensors guy. Oh yeah, then please do an active scan. Sure. Yeah. So, Take so. your time if you want and get a plus two. Uh, okay. Yeah, you're not yeah, in a I... rush, so you can you can take your time and uh, I'll be get right that back. Plus two to it. Okay. Uh, skills. So it'd be electronic sensors plus your choice of either intellect or, um, or so I got a six, I got a sixteen. Okay, so yeah, that's that's pretty good. So, <clears throat> so your active sensors um, confirm your worst fears. Um, this is um, from what you're seeing on the sensors. It shows all indications that this was the fuel dump. Um, but oh, great! It's like someone's destroyed it. They also pick up. Huh. Uh, so they do also pick up a very large ship. Oh, okay. So maybe this is the missing ship. Uh, so, yeah, okay. let's head to it. You think I should try to hail them? Uh, if it's missing, yeah. I mean, we've already used active sensors, so I mean, we're. I mean. So this we... is what is coming up on your sensor scan. Oops. There we go. That is our ship. That is Deep Night Endeavor. Now, the one thing about this. Um, that are coming back on your sensor scans is that these fuel pod shuttles, uh, there's three on a, on each side, are missing. That's to be expected. Well, maybe. Um, so, I mean, you know that uh, the theory was, if it was at this, um, at this fuel depot, the theory that was postulated was that it would be if they were, if they had run into a problem, they would have uh, jettis they would have jumped as far as they could, using the fuel in the fuel pod shuttles, and then jettison them, and allowing it to jump a little further with internal fuel, which would have gotten them hopefully to the uh, fuel depot. And so far, that is, seems to be 
tracking with what you're with what you're saying. All right, yeah, let's let's head towards it. Okay. Yeah. I will I will attempt to hail him. All right, I am oh, back. Welcome back. Can you welcome uh, back. log it into roll twenty? Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean because yeah. we're gonna we're gonna need fuel one way or another. We have no exit strategy here and we're out of fuel after that jump, so Yeah, we've got a few weeks probably of operational fuel, but yeah. Not enough to do a lot. Not, not enough to get back. Yeah. So we pretty much have to go forward. Yeah, Chatter has already started to talk about, well, we need to think about rationing. Uh, so let me know when we get within 500K, or is it 500K or 50K? 50. Um, well, yeah, it's 25K away right now. Oh, okay. Well, then uh, I'm going to use clairvoyance. Because uh, I've got a range of up to 500 kilometers on it uh, to get a uh, closer look uh, at what might be happening at that ship. Okay. So, uh, Jack, you're piloting. Um, you don't have to really make a piloting check, you just have to make a decision. So, this Serpent class scout ship, uh, the Eskaya, it's, it's capable of uh, two Gs of thrust. Are you just flooring it full two Gs, or are you are you going with one G so that you have some room left to maneuver if you need to? I mean, there there are no other ships out here, so and nor should there be. I mean, <laughs> full speed ahead. <laughs> uh, let's go one so we don't look aggressive. Okay. So I failed. I, I failed that. And lose a PowerPoint. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm silent point. Okay. Well. It is not all for naught. So this is what you see as you get closer. <clears throat> and It does have lights on <clears throat> and stuff? Yeah, there are still active uh, beacon lights. Um, but you are seeing... The first thing that you notice is that there there is um, some rather... Uh, serious damage and hold on here I need to get specific about about this I mean even, even if the, the ship is optimal we don't begin to have the crew to, to man that thing oh it's huge yeah yeah, and and if it's damaged and stuff, I mean that would take even more crew to deal with the problems of the damage. But I mean, frankly, we would just need to refuel and return, and then we yeah. can let people. Because I mean, that's we're after the reward, right? So you know, that's the theory. Yeah, if we can refuel and return, we know where to send them. Especially if this thing doesn't have enough fuel to jump any further, it may have enough fuel for us to jump out but not for it because I mean, it's massive so i would think it takes quite oh yeah it's running fuel is enough to top us off i would that's think. that's what i would hope yeah that's, that's what i'm hoping so the first thing that you notice is that um on the underside which is you know this section here that's the first noticeable damage that you see and um they there was there used to be a um, very active or, or what would be an active um, <clears throat> flight operations pod there. <clears throat> the the flop is currently um, it, you can see external damage. Something really really drove this. And it has no response to co communications? You're not getting any response from communications. Um, this side uh, rail here, you notice, has some damage as well. Now, then my question is, are you, um, and I mean, some of the damage that you're seeing on this, on this, uh, this rail, um, there are some spaces that appear to be vented into, uh, vented to space completely. Um, now, then the question is, you know, this is the only side that you're seeing. Are you going to kind of fly around and give the ship a, a once-over externally? What, what do you want to do? 
that's highly advisable to slowly circle the ship and do a deep scan and I mean rushing into things that's that's event horizon shit where you end we, up dead we wanna, <laughs> uh, let me let me try clairvoyance again I can I'm gonna I want to use um, from what I'm reading here I can do a uh, um, clairsentience where I can both see and hear a specific situation so I can actually try to see and hear what's happening on the bridge of that ship if I'm right if I can roll higher than a well that's an 8 at least So and that is not successful so yeah you you're not able to uh pick anything up um no problem yep dc's 10 for that i if i had gone with just seeing or hearing i would have succeeded but i got guilt i got greedy but jack you can make a piloting plus dex check and kind of uh maneuver around uh, and if we want to we want to radio him i might might consider radioing him yeah you, i've you been could, trying that yeah you can right? try raising them again but you're not getting any response I will. I mean, as we're approaching, I will. I will announce that we're pulling up and we're doing the circle. I mean, if anyone, just just because they're not responding doesn't mean they're not listening. And and so, I'm gonna I'm gonna at least try to keep them appraised as I slip into my vac suit. You got a fourteen. Yeah. Um, so Jack. But uh, man, you're a good pilot. <laughs> that's a that's a that's a good idea. We should probably all vac suit up just in case. I mean, this thing's got pretty big guns on it. I would imagine. I'm getting in my battle dress. Okay. Okay. So, you guys kind of cir- Jack expertly circles you around the ship, and you kind of give it a once over. Um. Everybody can make a... Well, you can make another... Well, visually, you can see a a couple of things. So the other rail on this side is much more badly damaged. Um, Like, it's tore up. Uh, Most of it is vented to space. At this closer range, can we get a deeper scan on this thing? Yeah, you can do another electronic sensors plus intellect or education check. And your ship has military grade sensors. I mean, hopefully we can tell if there's hydrogen in the tanks or not. Well, and your ship, this ship also has a life scanner analysis suite. Yeah, I suggest that. Uh, yeah, let's do, let's do that. Let's let's send, do some sensor stuff on it. Yeah, let's be cautious. I mean, right now, I mean, in theory, we can run away for a little while if we have to and, and think about things. If we start putting people on the ship, then we're we're kind of here. I'll take some more time on this, uh, some extra time on this to do the life, the this life sensor. Yeah, you can. That'll give you a plus two. So we're at 12 there. Yeah. Um, so- about how far away from the ship are we? Uh, you're probably, as you're kind of doing a damage assessment, um, you're, I would say you're probably, oh, well, I mean, you don't want to get too close, but I would say you're probably 500 kilometers. Ah, okay. Maybe 200 kilometers. Um, So the your role your check of with the life uh, scanner analysis suite, you're seeing that there's life all over this ship. Um, specifically, let's see here. You're seeing a large amount. Um, you're seeing some on the bridge. You're seeing um, there. There are there are three science pods on the on the dorsal side um, that the um, 
the app science pod seems to be con considerably filled with uh, with some form of life. I mean, the life scanner analysis week doesn't show you, you know, like people moving around or anything, but it it's showing that there is <clears throat> evidence of of biological life forms. I'm going to ask over the comms if they will uh, blink their lights on and off if they're hearing our communications. So, two, so yeah, two things. Um, <clears throat> you ask, you, you request that, and the, the uh, running lights do blink on and off. Um, and Jack... Uh, you notice as you're flying around that their communications array seems to have been hit by something. I mean, it, you're seeing blast marks. It looks like it was hit by a missile. Will they... Do they need medical assistance or anything like that? Blink the lights uh, once for yes and twice for no. Uh, Can we pull up a little closer? Yeah. So you get two for no. Okay. Do they? Uh, do you think we should should land? Uh, try to talk with them. Yes, and, and I think so. Them? I want to talk. So ask, I'd ask for, ask for permission to dock. You know, yeah. they, can, they can flash the lights. Yeah. Yes or no. so Request permission to dock. Uh, the lights. Uh, flash once for yes. So you have a cup. So if you if you do you want to get closer or do you want to attempt to dock? I want to attempt to dock. But I'm not the pilot. So you've got two. So so Jack, you have two choices. So or I mean, the, the group can make the decision too. So like I said, this rail uh, is completely trashed. Like, most of it is open to space. Naturally, it would be fairly easy for you guys to enter that way. However, um, you would have to do a spacewalk, which is dangerous in and of itself. And two, um, once you get in there, you don't know if there's an airlock or something that you can enter into the, the ship proper. So any door that you open you might likely have to cut through which would vent even more of the ship to space this side uh the 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 flop the flight operations pod is in such bad shape you wouldn't be able to dock there but this rail there are some some ways that you there is an airlock that you could dock to i think we should dock on the starboard rail at the, where we could dock. That's what I think. Yeah. I mean, since we have to go in close anyway, and we might want to try to get a better look, look at what damage has occurred underneath as we... It seems like that's where the damage hit, was the, under, the underside of it. So get a good view of it. Maybe record some images of the damage that's been done so that when we go inside, we have a better idea of what might need to work on and we definitely need to start preparing our report right <clears throat> on so, this. so you see uh i mean visually speaking <laughs> you see that there are a number of blast marks from missile impacts and a number of uh burn marks from laser fire um now of course drifting you know maybe six seven thousand kilometers from the endeavor is the debris field of what used to be the fuel depot um your assumption would be uh now endeavor is not a combat vessel i mean clearly but it is armed and it what you think probably happened um it's the only thing that makes sense would be the Endeavor, for one reason or another, fired on the fuel depot, and the fuel depot's automated defense systems initiated. And, I mean, this is a this is a naval asset, so it's not like the fuel depot was, 
was lightly armed. I mean, it it opened up, <laughs> but it was it was clearly, you know, um, less than successful. But it looks like it was up. Op- Whatever whatever combat happened looks like it happened at, at um, medium to close range. So I mean, it they were practically right on top of it when when whatever happened. And we don't. It, it, does it look like if I mean, do I need to do additional scans? Does it look like there is wreckage of other ships, or have the other ships you, maybe left? You don't see wreckage from any other ships. You see wreckage from. The fuel depot, and you see wreckage from that has come off of Endeavor. Okay, but that's those are the only two vessels. So, that you it's, so there's a chance that the pirates waited here and um, crippled it, and are now going to get help to finish the job. I don't know. There's no telling. Uh, anything we do at this point is conjecture. I'm ready to board. Yeah. yeah. All right, so, so Jack, let me be hiring plus a dex check to dock. That should be a routine check. Okay. So, Jack brings up the, uh, the Askaya and... Uh, successfully docks with the uh, one of the, the the starboard primary structural member, or I guess the right <laughs> the right primary structural member. Um, Do you guys want me to board with you or stay on the ship and keep it running? So Jack, oh, was, that's a good question. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, we 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 can all kind of just step out real quick and assess the the greeting party. I mean, if if we're going to get into combat, we probably want pretty much all of us there to fight our best fight. Uh, uh, yeah, I think the real issue is that we're we're completely committed being out here. We have yeah. no fuel to return. And so any fuel we're going to get is either going to come from this ship or another ship that comes into the system. And so, and we do uh, work for the same company that owns this ship. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that that company that owns the ship is currently in control of the ship. That's true. Yeah, so. Yeah. But I'd say it's up to you. I mean, if you, if you feel more comfortable disengaging and being separate, that, you know. Whatever, whatever makes you feel more comfortable. Uh, I say go with you guys. I can say we're fully committed. Yeah. So, uh, I think I'd be uh, helping in combat if it arose. So that's yeah. I guess that's our decision. Then we're going to dock and board as a as a crew. Okay. Let's see here. So Jack um, goes up and kind of docks with one of the um, fuel shuttle access um, hatches, which will put you in this area here. Um, You notice that there is considerable... um, There's been considerable damage um, in here uh, as you climb out of the ship um you everybody make a recon plus intellect check and how do you use the dice on this uh there is your there is a little dice icon on your toolbar on the left that's the second from the oh, bottom. Oh, there it is. Okay. I got a 10. Okay. 
Was it 2d6? Alternatively, you can type in slash roll space 2d6 plus whatever your bonus is. Yeah. Or, or if you fill out the character sheet, you can use the character sheet to roll for you as well. That's what I've been doing, although it's um, it's sometimes hard to read. At times, at times, sometimes the uh, character sheet can be a little laggy too. My character sheet is a is just a simple text document notepad. Right. It's just. Oh, I I use, I use the roll twenty character sheet. I'm I'm pretty used. To, I, I run two games, two traveler games using. Oof, that's not good. Yeah. <clears throat> you still rolled higher than me with your three. And what did what did Jack get? Ten. You got a ten. And Bosifus got a ten. All right. So, um, I am not trained in recon, so I am doing horribly. Jack and Bosifus, you notice something odd. I'm bringing all my gun. I'm coming with like my <laughs> cause pistol on, and and you know, just saying that up front. Yeah, I would Can assume I lock the door <laughs> on the way out of the ship. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, mean, yeah. I mean, you can you can certainly lock the airlock. Um, cool. Uh, but Jack Good and me. Bocephus, you notice something strange. In one of the ventilation ducts. All right. Now, is there uh, atmosphere where we're at? There is. Okay. I am keeping my helmet on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm going to point to that and and you know let's let's all keep our vac suits and and go you know let's let's not contaminate ourselves. And I'm going to take a... Can I do some kind of science biology or something to, to take a better look at that? Five seconds. Sure. Yeah, you can, if, if you want to take a closer look at it. Now, so when you say take a closer look at it, what do you mean? I don't mean lick it. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, just kind of take a gander at it. Uh, I mean, it looks like it's growing out of the vent. Uh is it a fungus? Is it just a, a root of some sort? You know what? What? Uh, you know, go I've got biology sciences. Yeah, go I, ahead and make a science biology plus your choice, either intellect or education. All right. Mm-hmm. Biology is one. I do have a Geiger I, Geiger counter, so I'd be checking to see if uh, radiation's levels are normal. Yeah, you're hey, not. I'm, you're not picking I'm up. I'm looking any around. I'm looking around. Do I see anything else? <laughs> Ugh, seven. So on a seven, um, the only thing that you can discern is that this, whatever this is, it looks like some kind of fungal growth. Um, and you, as you're looking at this, uh, whatever this is coming out of the um, vent, you see that it moves a little bit like it's trying to it looks like it's trying to to stretch and get through the vent to move closer to you i'm gonna back away (laughs) yeah and uh in fact you know uh i think we should drop a communications device and get back on our ship and talk to them by that we we should go no further and back the fuck up this 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 place might have a contagion or something. We we should we should back the fuck up. I mean, it's it seems unlikely that there'd be that many people on board their ship and nobody's got a transceiver. Can we try to maybe skip channels around and see if we can't raise somebody on I mean, we're close enough now that you know, other people's radios and comms and stuff like that should So, yeah, you uh you do. I don't know if anybody's got electronics comms, but that might be. I a... do. I have electronics comms one. That's that's my only. I have sure. electronics. I got electronics comms too. There you yeah. go. So we might see if we can't, because I mean, th- maybe the ship's impaired, but I mean, 
people on board have got personal computers and trans, you know, things like we do, you'd think that we might be able to reach one of them that way. Yeah. Uh, somebody, whoever wants to go ahead and make a, um, electronics comms plus intellect or education check. Okay. That's a 2d6. Yes. Everything in travel is pretty much 2d6. I mean, every once in a while he might give you a bonus or bane. (sighs) Go ahead, Luke. We'll okay. use your nine. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, um, Hannibal, you do get somebody on the line. Um, and they respond that they are actually, uh, they are master at arms, Reese our bone. Um, and uh, he wants to know who you are and uh, wants to know... Um, how many people could you take on your ship? Uh, this is Hannibal. I uh, am not sure how many we're willing to take on at this point. There's a fungal growth coming out of the vent. He says, oh, yeah, we're aware. Um, he says the, uh, the, the issue that we have is that uh, we are dead in space um, and tells you that um he says that uh they had they were on their exploratory mission they had detected a uh derelict craft um extremely old and that they had <clears throat> uh sent out a scout uh a science team to explore this craft um and when they came back he said that with within hours after on the way back like they they didn't even get all the way back to the ship one of the people on board uh, got very ill um they exhibiting flu-like symptoms um they went to the med bay um basically you know we're told you know it's probably you you just you got a bug and you'll get better but they didn't and they eventually ended up um they ended up dying, or at least that's what they thought. And they said he said that within six hours, the body got up moving on its own volition and uh, uh, started attacking other crew members. All right, well, that's not good. He says that after, after a while, uh, the these animated corpses uh they call they refer to them as shamblers um they they get less and less dexterous and they get less and less um um useful as um as an animated corpse and what happens is that uh they then basically will um kind of expire on their own but the worst situation is that um they they brought back some artifacts from this um this derelict and it went to the aft science pod and evidently whatever it is that they brought back had some of these fungal spores on it and it has now kind of taken over there's just a big, large fungal growth in the aft science pod. And he says the strange thing is that once these shamblers become um, no longer dexterous enough to function or to even make attacks, they all seem to go to this aft science pod. Okay. So uh, I talk to the crew and I say uh, to the crew, we should probably put the pilot and one of ours back on the ship and disconnect from the, uh, uh, break away from the uh, dock on the ship, seal the door behind us. So, I mean, th- this master... We need, to re- we need to refuel is the critical thing. Master at Arms... We'll worry about that later. Right now, we got to worry about a contagion. Yeah, Master at Arms Reese Arbonne is saying, uh, you know... That he, that uh, the captain of the ship is currently not on the bridge. Um, uh, he wants to evacuate the uh, bridge crew 
He says, right now, he says, when we got to the, the, um, when we got to the fuel depot, uh, the, the, the cap, the, he says the skipper was, was, is ex Navy. And so he knew about this fuel depot. And he said, when we got there, um, one of their gunnery sergeants, um, he, he just refers to her as guns, opened fire with beam, the beam laser turrets on the port, uh, PSM and the automated defenses on the um, on the fuel depot returned fire and uh, she, I mean she was successful she ended up blowing it up but not before they were able to refuel so they do have they do have some fuel um, but he says um, you know until until we can be certain that you are going to um, evacuate our bridge crew um, we're we're not willing to part with our fuel he says that right now the situation is that uh, there are there's the bridge crew there are the engineering crew um, and there uh, there are the mission operations crew and those are three completely separate factions that are at odds with one another there's been a complete mutiny aboard well, this is an invasive species. I mean, so do we have a way to scan for whether someone's been implanted? I mean, it's you know seems like if that's what we're really worried about, you know, it seems like it should be pretty easy to scan if somebody's got it in their system or not. He says he he's he's not aware of anything, but it's possible that somebody from the mission crew uh, may have more information. But currently, they are not in contact with the mission crew, and he. He basically says that if, if if he had if he had his choice that he would just shoot all of them as mutineers. Is he in contact with the other factions though? No, not re not currently. So okay. Well, I mean, we could possibly house them in the cargo bay, right? Uh, uh your cargo bay is pretty small. Well, I mean, a s scout ship's got what, 12 tons? I mean, that's quite a few people, I would think. Stack them up. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, what can he do to stop us from... Uh, well, let me say, if we're worried that they're... Taking the fuel. I mean, we could just kind of coast the ship right over next to their fuel thing and tap a hole in it and drain as much as we wanted. Yeah, you've got 7.8 tons of cargo space. Okay. Well, I'm going to respond to him on the comms and say we're going to investigate the situation. We're coming in. I get off of the mic. Okay. Um, and then I relay the message to the crew. Guys, make sure that ship is locked up. Nobody gets on board. It, it doesn't have much in the way of personnel defense. I mean, in terms of, you know, if they decided to board us. Right. I'm we don't exactly have sandcasters. Well, <laughs> but I mean, they, they, there's, not, there's so many ways in that locking the door is not. Why don't you just... Fly the fly the ship a short distance away. Yeah. Take the time to go investigate the. Uh, I'd we say we get get the fuel first. Let's let's be fueled up. You know what I mean? Because yeah. the, we don't want to be screwed and then have to fuel our ship. Yeah, we can tell the tell the captain or, or this <laughs> this man at arms that he can start gathering his bridge crew together, and and we will. Uh, you know, how many is he saying is his bridge crew? Because because ultimately, no one survives here if we can't jump out. That's uh, true. And, and as a matter for the people on the ship or not, so I would rather we have our fuel first, and then we worry about how many people we're bringing back with us, or if we're bringing anyone back. Well, that's what yeah, that's what we're going to tell this guy, this man, sergeant at arms. You know, if he wants to start getting ready, we'll go ahead and fuel our ship up. So he and, tells uh, you he tells you that the bridge crew has twenty three members. We can't take all of that. I mean that's 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 that we can't take your whole faction. Sorry. What if we just tell him what he wants to hear? We could we could lie. Great, uh, let's do it. <laughs> well, let's, is there any way to roughly figure about how many you could take? So. 7.8 cubic tons of, of cargo space. I mean... It's not much. It's not a lot. 
Um, I, I would imagine... I mean, you probably... If they don't mind sleeping on top, it's going to be a really shitty week. But, I mean... Yeah, I would I think know. that you could get 23 people into 7.8 tons of cargo space. Yeah, you could get them in there, but it's a week. You know, them, you know, restrooms and things like that, you know, it's... Life that's, support. Life support's food. the bigger problem, is that it, it's not so much the space. I don't know that the Askaya is going to have enough life support to support that many people. I say you know, we take five. I know and... a great way to fix all of it. We pack them all in there, fly away, and hit the cargo eject button. Ooh. Bam. <laughs> Done. Uh, this is a company we work for and are hoping to continue working for. Uh, hey, well, you're not employees of the company as of yet. <laughs> right, but we're hoping to go to work for them, ejecting their people into space, lying to their people, which is, this is all going to be documented, right? I mean, if we're only going to take, yeah. if we're not taking all 23, they're, the, rest, the survivors are going to know we took them. And it's so, only documented yeah. if you say it. <laughs> I, I think if we're gonna, if it's we're gonna all take documented. Them. We're gonna have taken them. They're gonna know that we took them. It's going to get logged, and you know, this is this is Navy. This is military. This is a you know bureaucracy. Oh, they don't log crap. We should, well, we should, we should talk to the other factions. Seriously, dude, see, yeah. you're wrong. No, and, no, uh, there's so much broken intercommunication between all of them. If it gets logged somewhere, it gets lost after 30 minutes. So uh, this is a disaster with with a huge amount of resources that a company is going to want to get to the bottom of. And so I think you're completely wrong. They're going to investigate the hell out of everything. And so we don't want to just say, sure, we'll take people, then space them. That seems really, really stupid. So, well, and then we destroy what remains of the ship. <laughs> I'm more we worth all it's, worth, it's, it's worth millions with a huge reward for its recovery so no let's not do that I, I would actually like to do the humanitarian attempt before we try the this is pi- we're not we're not we're not playing pirates of Trinax here we are not <laughs> pirates <laughs> I will be right back <laughs> right. I, I think we should try to talk to the other factions, uh, but most certainly I think we should start taking the ship and start refueling. And in order to do the refuel, I bet that we have to holler at the engineers. And we have to have their okay before we start accessing their shit, or, or we have to be willing to kill the engineers. Uh, another course of action is also... You know, looking at the fuel depot and seeing if some of those tanks or one of those tanks might have survived, we could refuel there and not have to deal with them. It just might require some spacewalking. But if we well, if we use tethering protocols uh, for the spacewalk, it's a lot safer. This ship has different shuttles that can be attached to it, right? And so, yeah. I I would think that if we have a way to scan for whether someone's contaminated or not they could safely put, you know, the non-contaminated people in a safe location. And, uh, you know, we can have, you know, rescue, a rescue back here within two weeks. Uh, uh, we don't have to really take any of them if that's the case. Right. We could yeah. Just, yeah. We're, we're not taking any of you. You guys hang here. We're coming back with help. We're going to take some fuel. Uh, we don't exactly. really care if you believe us or not, but this is what we're going to do. Uh, because you've spoken that you have contagion and fungal stuff on there, we really don't want to take any chances on infecting that. Uh, you should you should make peace with the other factions while we're gone because we're going to come with people that are going to equalize everything and get to the bottom of everything. Uh, yep. That will be that. Yeah, That's, that's what I think we should do. Yes, vaguely. I was thinking we might take a small group with us, say 12, uh, maybe even do like three or four from each faction and say, hey, the rest of you try and get along until we can send a rescue back. Why don't we take two from each faction? That's six. Uh, that's, that's enough that everybody has a representation. 
uh, and we can put them in a low berth. We could keep them quarantined. We'd have to set up a quarantine area on the ship. Yeah. yeah. Cargo bay. Yeah. They'd have to stay on the cargo bay, and they'd have to come unarmed. Yeah. Because yeah. I'd, I'd like to be able to check them if they're infected, but I doubt we'll be able to. So we'll probably have to bring, and we'll probably have to bring a small group just to get access to the fuel. What is what is our general assessment on how we could, uh, can we assess the, access the fuel without their consent? You don't know. You haven't tried yet. Yeah. Well, I mean, can we do it on the out? I mean, can we do it externally? Is what I'm asking. Can we take the ship around that other side of the exterior and no. tap their fuel tanks from the outside and just cipher off what we want? No, no. If you okay. attempted, if you attempted to. Um, <clears throat> to tap the fuel tank um what would essentially happen would be that it, it would just vent the fuel it, it's you're you you're not going to fill up your tank that way it's just going to end up venting the fuel okay well then yeah my 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 vote is that we keep a keep somebody here to try to line out you know what's going on and talk to some of these people figure out i don't just want to trust the bridge crew i mean they if they were given stupid orders to get everybody killed and the engineers just ended up being smart enough to save everybody's ass you know then that might be the people we want to lean on that they would have more access to the fuel we want than people on a bridge on a disabled ship my opinion but i think we should take the scout ship and go see if we can find fuel uh, in the wreckage of the fuel depot, see if there's anything there. So while you, are, we... you already know, there's nothing worth keeping left of the so, fuel depot. So I have a tech level 14 medikit, which has a densitometer to do a three dimensional view of a patient's body, and scans brain activity even at the quantum level. So I mean, I would think that I, with that medikit. I should be able to scan for somebody who's got a parasitic infection or, you know, some kind of weird plant growth on them. So I think we'd be okay to, you know. What about low birth options? I don't know if this ship has. I, I, I don't, I'm trying to find the specs the, on this the particular ship. Serpent class is on page 165 of uh, High Guard 2022 update. And it does. I want to say it does. Actually, you know what? I don't think it does have any low births. Yeah, I don't think so. It's a scout ship. It's usually what about the Deep Night Endeavor? Um, if well, Deep Night Endeavor might have some low birds on board. Um. Or they might do you one better. Um, they would. They. It's very possible that uh, because it is a a science vessel. It in one of those um, in one of those science pods is is the med bay. They may have cryogenic options as well. Then perhaps we need to investigate the science pods. If it is a serpent, we do have fuel scoops. So. Technically, we just need to spill fuel, and we could re. And as long as we're maneuverable, we could refuel. Uh, but I think we'd be able to scan people as they as we allow them on the ship to see if they're infected. So no, no humans or anything has come around, I guess, to greet us in any way physically. No, yeah, there, 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 there is a door there is a leading door four. Leading. Uh, here um, but you haven't seen any other people okay um, let's contact them and try to find out if they know how this stuff's uh, I mean is it how is it the infection 
infer- I mean, is it airborne? I mean, do they have any idea at all how this thing spreads? So you are you you contact the uh, bridge again, and this time like... this time you get uh, Captain Miklos Zankirli on, and uh, the Captain Miklos uh, tells you that um, they don't know how it spread. Right. Well, I mean, uh, but you're... he he. What he does know is that it is some kind of fungal. Mass. So he's assuming that um, he said uh, it, that you'll want to be careful uh, because there are uh, spore clouds. Right. So if we get microscopic spores on our vac suits and we don't properly decontaminate, I mean, that alone could cause our entire ship to be contaminated. You, you do understand that the most logical thing here would be for us to refuel and jump back, get aid and assistance and return within two weeks with you know the full company's rescue you know operation uh you know right now we're your only survival is to for us to leave we have to leave in order for the people on board your ship to survive and if we get contaminated to the point where we can no longer leave we're all dead so he responds that um he, the captain tells you, he says uh, that uh, he would send, uh, he'd be willing to send 10 of the bridge crew uh, with you to get back. But he says, and, and he's very adamant about this, he's not abandoning his ship. And his plan is that this he's taking this ship home. Do you have enough fuel to return home? No, but that's one reason why he's sending. He wants to send ten people with you so that they can yeah. go get a, a tanker. I agree, but if they are contaminated, or if even their suits are contaminated, that could mean the end of our ship as well. So that you don't have any rescue attempt. You do understand why we're worried. We're concerned about that. And if you're at war with the engineers. Well, I mean, they have access to the stuff, right? I mean, if he's if he's at war with them, how can he even get us access to the fuel? Is what I'm saying. We I'm have, not taking have, over your conversation. I'm we, just... have, we have fuel scoops. The fuel is not flammable. All we need to do is cut a hole, and and we can scoop fuel. You know, uh, it it would mean a little extra work when it comes to returning. But I mean, we we can refuel without the assistance of engineers if we know where the fuel is located. I was just saying engineering is probably right next to the fuel tanks of the ship, and they would near the, be near the fuel processors, the J drives, the M drives. All that would pro- is probably located in one section of the ship, and the bridge being in another section of the ship. I mean, I, I just don't believe – I'm just talking to the crew here. Is I don't believe that we're talking to the guy that can broker a deal for fuel. Well, I'm, I'm just saying we don't need to broker a deal for fuel. I mean – the fuel is not explosive. It's hydrogen. It's it's basically liquid. It's, you know, you could we could take a welding torch and cut a hole in the hull, right into the gas tank, and it won't cause any fuel to detonate. And any fuel that comes out, we can suck in with our fuel scoops. I mean, we can refuel without cooperation. Does the this is a little shuttle bay that's made from a a, a fueling pod. I mean, can we just connect, uh, right on up, right here? I mean, is the, 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 the valves and stuff here to plug in? Do you see that there is a valve? I mean Let's try you, that. Were, you were connected when you when you docked with the uh with this port. Well uh is there a uh some kind of console or something we can attempt to start the fuel flowing? Definitely. Uh, whoever wants to make an engineering power plus intellect or education check can do so. I'm not the engineer. Uh, I mean, I'm a, a, I got a zero in power. That was always the problem we had the last. Well, that, well I mean, that should be enough for you to to get the information that I'm going to give you. Okay. Skills. 
Oh. Uh, box cars. Oh, roll a ten. So eleven is what I got. Okay, so <clears throat> that's actually really good. So <clears throat> you um, you go over to the fuel console and try to initiate a refuel, and what you the information that you get back from the console is that. Um, well, it tells you quite a bit. So, for one, um, the the captain on the bridge, even if he were to authorize it, they would not be able to refuel your ship because there is the the fuel lines are manually um, locked down from engineering. They've been, they've been, they've had a manual lockdown on them from the engineering section. I've got a laser cutter if we have to. Um, all right, well, maybe we try to hail engineering. Um, yeah, we could start heading to engineering if that's what we have to do. Well, or, or try to somehow get them on the, com on the comms. So as you are about to try and get them on the comms, let me fix this. That's bad. This is where you guys are kind of standing here. This this door, which is an airlock, iris valve, opens, and in walks this crew member. Now, you can immediately notice that uh, this guy doesn't seem quite right. And this is what this crew member looks like. So this is on our ship now? You're not on your ship. You guys left your ship. You're standing in the fuel bay or in the, uh, the, fuel, gotcha. shuttle, the fuel shuttle bay on the starboard PSM. Okay. And so this guy, the door opens, and this guy walks in. I want to shoot him with my gauze pistol. <laughs> okay. Uh, here. Right, He's got things wanna, growing out of his eyes. I want to scan him so we can get an idea of what to look for. I mean, you don't mind me shooting him, though, do you? I can scan him either way. <laughs> yeah. Dead or alive, we're gonna, you're gonna get scanned. Yeah. Well, we're gonna do that initiative thing. Probably stop that. Yes. If I can get roll twenty in there, archaic um, drop down menus to function. All right, everybody can roll an ash. That's uh, either int or dex, right? Correct. I don't know why I always check if they're both the exact same number. So it looks like Sarda, Hannibal, and Jack all got zeros. Yep. Okay. Actually, no. Jack got eleven. So you're at three. Okay. So between Bocephus and Sarda, well, Bocephus said that he wanted to sh shoot. Oh, sorry. You're at Minus one. Okay. And between Hannibal and Sarda, which one of you would like to go first? 
I'm happy to let Hannibal go before me. Okay. All right, I'll go before you. <clears throat> All right, so Jack, you see this, uh, <clears throat> and the <clears throat> this guy that, I mean, not only does he look effed up, but this guy is kind of walking clumsily, um, pretty much seems fairly mindless, but um, clearly is looking in your direction and moving in your direction. So Jack, what would you like to do? Uh, so he's at about 10 meters. How does range work again? Because I have a stunner with a 5 meter range. So you, so a stunner, uh, because it's over 5 meters, <clears throat> that would be long range, so you'd be at minus 1. Is it minus 1? Yeah, it would be minus 1 to hit. Okay. I want to try and do that. But okay. 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 Uh, so that is a plus two to damage. Okay. Hold on just a second here. I know they have some special ability. Here we go. So then my question, <clears throat> I don't know, I'm, you're, you're the first person in any of my games that's used a stunner, so. Oh, they're great. Oh, I agree. Just, I'm trying to determine how it's going to work in this situation. So I don't know if it'll an, work. Oh. It is an energy weapon. Okay. So you <clears throat> you stun him, or you try to stun him. That's your significant action. Uh, he does not go down. Jack, w would you like to move at all? You can move six meters with a minor action. Does he seem to react to the small death? Not really. Uh, I would like to step back and switch weapons. Okay. <clears throat> So, step back. I mean, you can take, you can move back six meters. Okay. There you go. Okay. All right. Uh, Hannibal, what would you like to do? Um, I'm going to uh, pull out my uh, heavy combat rifle. Okay. And I'm going to shoot at him, or at least attempt to. Okay. So, are you using an uh, advanced combat rifle? Yes. Okay. So, do you want to... Uh, set that for uh, burst fire, single shot. What do you want to do? I think single shot should be good. Okay. Uh, four D six. Oh. What'd you get for your to hit roll? Uh, what's that? What'd you get for your to hit roll? Oh, uh, what is the... So, so you want to roll gun combat plus dex. Okay, gun combat plus dex. So it's going to be, yeah, 4D dex 1. No, not, not 40. 2D plus, plus your gun combat plus your dex modifier. Is it... It's only 2D, not yeah, 4? Correct. Okay. Yeah, you only roll 2D6 to hit. 
Oh, okay. Oof. Oh, oh, that's a miss. So that is a miss. Oh, wait. Whoa, hold up a second. I need to add three to that because I have a plus three. Or no, plus two because this is... Uh, what What is this considered? Maybe. Energy, slug, area. It, it's a slug. It's a slug. Okay, so plus two. So, that's five. Still a, yeah, it's still a mess. Yeah, okay. Uh, and with your... Well, your minor action was pulling out your gun. Sarda, what would you like to do? Um, I'd like to, I don't, where, <laughs> where, where, where would we get back onto our ship? <laughs> so, so your ship would be connected like over here. Yeah. Let's, I'd like to move towards that, but at the same time, maybe grab, get an arc, uh, fire. So I'm going to move to here and for my other two actions, I'll pull out my stunner and I'll pull out, uh, the medic kit. Okay. Josephus, what would you like to do? <clears throat> I am going to aim and shoot my gauze pistol. Okay. Yeah, I think that's the best course of action. Ooh. Ooh. That's, that's, that's going to miss. Yes, it is. <clears throat> and you still have a minor action. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move six meters back. Okay. Uh, i got to put myself back. i got to measure it. Don't I? Uh, well, yeah, you can do it that way. I can go right there. Yeah, that's my turn. Okay. Yay me. All right. The Shambler. Come on now. There we go. Uh, he is going to... <clears throat> he's going to use all three of his minor actions. And he is going to get right up in Hannibal's face in melee. So Hannibal, uh, you wouldn't be able to shoot your your uh, ACR because it is a rifle, but you could use it as a club. <clears throat> um, and that's all he can do. So we are back to Jack. What would you like to do? So with one minor action, you can move six meters. And you can either use a significant action or you can use three minor actions in a turn. So if you used all three minor actions, you could move 18 meters, but you wouldn't be able to do anything else. Okay. That is another hit. For plus two to damage. Ooh. Okay. So... Oh, you're hitting him with laser carbine? Yeah. Okay. So, uh... Well, because you had your stunner out, so oh. if you pulled out the laser carbine, um, that would be another minor action. Yeah. 
Yeah, you could do that. Sorry about that. No problem. <clears throat> Not a problem at all. Uh, so, Hannibal, what would you uh, like to do now that you've got this uh, shambler all up in your grill? Uh, let's see. What would I like to do? Kick him, Kick him in the nards. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess I could use my rifle as a club. Yes, you could. So that would be a improvised weapon. Well, no, it's just a club. It's melee. Yeah, it's melee. It's just a, it, it's just a club. Perfect. Okay. So let's see what happens. So that would be uh, melee plus your choice, either dex or strength. Now, if you're wearing battle dress, <laughs> you might want to go with strength because that battle dress is giving you, what, plus three to your strength? Yeah, something like that. So, you know what? Or no, it makes, your, it makes your strength like 15 so that, yeah, you'd have plus three modifier for strength. Okay. Because, yeah, so I'd normally have a plus one. So you rolled five plus another three. That's a six. <clears throat> that is still a miss. I mean, he, he basically blocks it with his forearm. Um, well, wait, if it's a uh, plus five, right? Or plus four, plus five? What What is your, what? so your strength is plus three. What's your melee skill? Uh, melee is one. Okay, so that's that's still a seven now. Or wait, okay. five, six, seven, eight. No, you hit with a plus one to damage. So roll uh, 2d plus one. Okay. Man, I've been rolling bad. Yeah, there's some, some nights. All right. Seven. Okay. He takes two. And then can I jump back? You can. <laughs> and you don't have to take something stupid like the disengage action. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I think I want to move. Oh, oh yeah. I don't have to, huh? No. Yeah, you can move <laughs> six meters. Okay, I think I'm gonna go. I mean, he, he could take a, he could take a reaction to try to swat at you, but yeah, I guess I guess he'll do that. Let's see here. Um, <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Yeah, he'll try that. What the, why not? It's not like it can get worse. Nope. And he misses with a six. <laughs> <laughs> or no, he misses with a five. Yeah, it's even worse than that. He is just clumsy as shit. He, he swings wide, totally misses you, whiffs it. Serta, what would you like to do? Uh, I'll fire my... I'll aim and fire my... Stun, actually, I'll fire my stunner and then move. Okay. <laughs> Shoot and scoot here. Uh, so that's a nine... Yeah, that's and... plus one to damage. So twelve damage, but it is non-lethal for whatever. Okay. If that if that matters. He goes down. Cool. <coughs> uh, th then I will move up to him and prepare <laughs> to scan him. Okay. Go ahead and make a medic plus. Uh, medic plus your choice, either. Uh, mm. I think it's scanners, right? It's electronic. Well, yeah, sensors. it would be it would be electronic sensors plus either intellect or education. Sure. <laughs> Not bad for non-lethal. Oh, that's and uh, the higher tech level stunner does even more damage. You what? I want to keep a real close watch while he's scanning. Okay. Okay. So you you. 
Wow, that is horrible. I, I snake eyes. I got a seven. Mm. So you're even with a seven, you do determine something. So um, you you hit him with non-lethal. Um, you're not detecting any brainwave patterns. Like you're you're getting a flat line as far as um, brainwave okay. patterns. Let's send him out the airlock. <laughs> well, I mean that te- that tells us that the whatever the parasite is in control. I mean the the person does not have he's not he's not right. Fake. But if it can't survive in space, then space yeah, it just kind of yeah, it just removes him. Yeah, it just it doesn't help us for what we really need. Uh, if we if we can make sure that we're going to have the time, I'd like to continue scanning him. I'm, I really want I want to be able to identify whether or not somebody's got it in them. Period. You know what I mean? So that if we are going to take on any bridge crew, we can scan to make sure that they're not already contaminated. You know what I mean? Fair enough. I'll give him a dose of the knockout juice. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so but, uh, that that that'll stop him from getting back up in theory, and will allow you to do a more in depth stand while we armed and re- at the ready watch over you. That's, that's guy, my theory. Yeah, because I mean, I'm I'm basically trying to figure out what is not human in him. You know what I mean in terms of scanning the the. Can the, I assist uh, him with my medic skills, and we do a task chain? Yeah, yeah, you can certainly do that. Okay. So go, uh, I can do, go ahead and make go a ahead. medic plus education or intellect. All right. Yeah, this this will help you. Yeah. Yeah, because if we're going to let anybody on our ship, we don't want to find out that we let somebody on who's got this and during the week. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Holy so, crap. That's pretty so, good. Yeah, you get my effect, I guess, added to you or something. I don't, I don't know. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> So with a plus seven on top of your sensors, uh, Sarda, you are <clears throat> you are starting to get some data back. Um, this this guy is uh, it's not even human anymore. Right. It's it's mostly some form of fungal matter. Okay. Um, but what you you're detecting two things though. Um, so it this shambler went down and is not moving, but the fungal matter is not dead. The other piece, uh, the other piece okay. of information that you two guys are able to find out is that, um, so one, um, you can see where it's been shot. Um, and clubbed, uh, they they take next to no damage from physical, uh, but you are able to determine that they will take full damage from energy weapons. Okay, so the fire. stunners, uh, stunners, uh, stunners, and fire are effective. Okay. And the other thing that that your scanners are basically, you're seeing stuff on the scanner that you both you and Bocephus have never seen anything like this before. It is a completely new and foreign life form. And what you what Bocephus is able to determine is that this thing's extremely difficult to kill. So this this uh, fungal matter, it could be out in the vacuum of space and it will not die. It'll go dormant until it reaches uh, warmth and atmosphere, and then it picks up like like nothing happened. Can we put it in the airlock and set it on fire in that little safe cushion zone of the airlock, maybe? You think maybe that will kill it? I think that's what we're going to have to do to our suits. What if we just do it right here? Yeah, we well, could we do, that. do that. I don't mind. We, we should try to burn it. I think I think we're gonna to want to apply fire to all of our suits when we go back to our ship. I agree. Yeah. To make sure we're not contaminating, taking any spores with us. I mean, if we're talking, 
we're talking a mold or a fungus. I mean, it, it can be a really small spore. You're correct. Oh, no, no, Everything is contagious here. We need to follow uh, and go to engineering and get the the damn pipes open so we can. Yeah, we can we refuel. Need, we need and, to refuel as quickly as possible and get back in our ship. Yeah, and and with this case, but what we've just seen is, uh, you know, we we should we should think this whole area is a hostile environment. <laughs> You're issuing general general order. Nope. Nope. Yeah. Everybody kind of is that another one coming out? Is that what you're doing? No, I'm just getting him out of my oh, way. you're just joking. What you're doing. <laughs> so, so, all of you all can, of can make, make a recon plus intellect check. Josephus, Jack, what about uh, not Hannibal? So, Josephus and Jack from this airlock, you see somebody looking at you. From where? From right here. Oh, okay. And he looks like this. It is clear to you guys that he is a Dorian. Wave to him? I mean, I don't think this fungus is going to be able to respond in a way that... Uh, I'm putting my personal. psionic shield up. Okay. okay. And he says, and he says uh, uh, you wave to him and he says, uh, uh, hello? Hello? Uh, <laughs> Where did you, Where did come, you from? come from? Uh, we are currently docked, hoping to refuel so that we can jump out of here and get help. He says, he says um, uh, Did you? Did you, did you, did you my, my, my. So he says, um, He says, uh, Well, uh, the engineering faction actually locked down the fuel. He says, uh, um, but, uh, he says, um, I, I'm not really, I'm not really a member of any of the factions. He says, uh, I was a part of the mission team and he says, uh, but I'm friendly, uh, with many of the factions. There's, there's quite a few of us, uh, here in the starboard PSM that uh, don't want to be a part of any of this little mutiny that's going on. <clears throat> it, he says, it seems to me that that's rather unhealthy. And to be realistic with you, um, dealing with the bridge faction is um, probably the least healthy of your options. But um, it could be possible that I could introduce you to the engineering faction or the um, mission faction and... Uh, Maybe we could do something about getting fuel to your ship. Um, right now, though, I don't recommend taking off from this vessel because uh, Guns is still out there and she still has ac manual access to the beam laser turrets. He says at one point she tried to turn the turrets on, the, on, the own on our own ship, but they don't traverse that far. And he says, um, he says, oh, I'm sorry, my name is Trenance. Um, and he says, um, he, he kind of, he doesn't come over to shake anybody's hand. He, he's, he's keeping a healthy, um, social distance from everybody, but he says, you know, I can, I can introduce you to, you know, the mission faction. Um, uh, they have a laboratory where they've been kind of just studying this disease. I heard a rumor that they might be working on a cure. He says, and or I could introduce you to the engineering faction. They would be, um, I mean, if you're able to get somebody, get some people off the ship, I, I'm sure that uh, um, they would be willing to, you know, help refuel your vessel. He and says, cut the power to the, uh, to the weapon systems? 
He says that, yeah. He says uh, if if that if that were the situation, um, I'm sure that they could be convinced to to cut off power to the beam laser turrets. He says Guns is a little. Um, she's a little zealous about this situation. He says she she's under the impression that this ship can't get anywhere near civilized space. Uh, I tend to agree with her. Uh, at the same time, everyone's survival depends on us jumping out. And the only way we jump out is with fuel. Uh, it, but it doesn't matter what faction you belong to. you, We cannot save anywhere near everyone. And so the only way that anyone survives is for us to leave and return with a rescue mission. And so we need that fuel in order to leave. Uh, and uh, frankly, we, we have scoops. We don't need engineering's assistance to refuel us. We could cut a hole in the fuel tank and take what we need. Uh, but right now we're worried about getting contaminated ourselves and I can understand where she is coming from. And anyone we allow into our ship is possible contamination vector that we don't want to deal with. He says, well, you're clearly the scientific type, so you, you probably, um, at this stage, it would probably be, uh, you know, in your interest uh, to talk with the, uh, with the mission faction, because, like I said, I've heard rumors that they're working on a cure. And so, um, you'll probably want to talk to uh, the mission officer, uh, Jarla Klein, and... Uh, um, at least if at least if they have something going on, he, he says that it's a good bet that because this this whole situation has been going on for a month at least. I would be willing to bet that she's got some way of inoculating you against these spores. Uh, do we have a way to contact her? Is there a comm unit that we can call her on? He says no, but I can take you there. Well, I, why can't you bring uh, a representative from there here? They won't why, leave. Why won't they use their phones? They don't have radios? Not The mission faction was cut off from all of their equipment, um, and the armory has been locked down. By the bridge faction. I mean, can, can you deliver a note? I, I, I mean, I was leaving leaving the this this area right here. I mean, we have the only key to everybody's survival. Well, we can go get. A, I mean, we can go get a comm unit and have him deliver the comm unit. I mean, right? I mean, we there are ways around this, right? I mean, radio is not hard to give. Well, yeah. I mean, he he could do that. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about contamination. We really don't want to walk into a contaminated ship. Well, I mean, you're yeah. already in the contaminated ship. I mean, right? We, I'd rather not be here. I, I didn't realize we'd even gotten <laughs> out of our ship. I thought we were still trying to get. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, well, I, I mean, if an inoculation or something like that would be useful, uh, if it, but if it's... that I mean, that that means not a lot if we still can't get engineering's approval to get fuel. If they had an inoculation, they'd be using it. This wouldn't be an issue, right? Well, he he thinks that he he's under the impression that the mission faction is using it. Perfect. We'll refuel, leave, and come back, and everything will be cured with their inoculation. <laughs> Sounds like they're going to solve the problem. We need to leave so that we can get you a rescue, because without us leaving, there is no fuel for this ship to leave. Okay. I mean, yeah, you can, you can just go ahead. He's not going to stop you. Uh, I mean, he doesn't. He he's he's like, uh, you know, go ahead. I'm not getting on your ship. That that's leave. This ship ha this ship is much bigger than your than a serpent. It's got a lot more guns on it, even for an exploration vessel. So, you know if. If if guns goes up and decides to activate a battery, then 
I mean, Mission Control has no control over that. The battery, I, I, I mean, the inoculation sounds neat and everything, but uh, anything they're talking about right now is secondary uh, when our, our immediate needs are, are dealing with the engineering. I, I think we should approach them first. Yeah, and, cause, and, because we don't need inoculation. No. They do, so they should continue to inoculate each other. In the meantime, <laughs> let's try to get refueled so that we can get out and we uh, can... In theory right now, we're all protected from the spores because of our back suits. And right. Staying we're we're, we're going to need to make sure that we've properly decontaminated ourselves. Fuck yeah, but I'm, we're gonna I've got to floating be... tonsils, so <laughs> guide us in. You, burn, wait, you need like... Burn, we need torches to burn the vac suits to make sure that they're we're not bringing any spores onto our ship. Right. Uh, well, I mean, you can you can decon um, you can decon your suits. Um, you know, high pressure spray, um, ultraviolet light. That will be yeah. enough to decontaminate. Which I mean, ultraviolet light. Every airlock, your your airlock has a decon routine okay. where it uses ultraviolet light so that that would decontaminate you but it's yeah but i mean at the same time it's an unknown it's an unknown species that we're not even sure you know what i mean so it's one of those things where we may want to be a little more paranoid oh, um, yeah definitely want to be paranoid <laughs> uh so uh let's see so the scout ship has what in the way of sensor arrays um, it has a it has military grade sensors and it has uh, a life analysis suite. All right, so <laughs> we can we could scan for where the fuel is specifically, and then we could do a spacewalk, you know, and actually, you know, use use a torch and cut a hole, and and bleed out fuel. You could, yes. Without having to get the help of the engineers, but in the meantime, I think we should try to make contact with the engineers and see if we can't get them to actually allow us to refuel. But if they can't, if they're not going to let us refuel, we can hypothetically take it ourselves. So, um, uh, asking, we'll ask him: Is there a way to contact? Do engineering? Does engineering have radios? Uh, again, no, but he can take you to engineering. He says, uh, uh, chief engineer, uh, Dak Moralder is, uh, he's a pretty reasonable person. Um, he, he says, um, he's a, or, um, uh, he's a Verger, um, or I'm sorry, she's a Verger, um, and that, uh, um, he says, I'll, I'll just warn you right now, she's pretty adamant about getting her people um, off this ship. Um, he says, see, a lot of these, a lot of the crew members are under the impression that uh, that uh, one way or another, they're, they're going to get their people home. And uh, he says, I, I personally am not, um, I'm a little bit more of a pragmatist. I don't think that that's actually going to happen. Do we have a transceiver that we could just hand off to this guy to bring to engineering? Because I'd really rather not walk through this ship. It, it to me, it. Who knows who's going to try to steal our ship while we're wandering around inside theirs? I, you know, I just I don't like the idea of going anywhere away from our ship. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if one of you wants to part with your transceiver, I mean, it, you're. The, the transceivers that you guys are carrying have, like, what, a 5,000 kilometer range? So. I mean, we've. We're going to have to. We're going to have to go talk to somebody, I'm sure, to do a face to face. I don't discussion. think we are. We This is a this is a contamination issue. Everybody should be completely aware of that. Um. I mean, I have a transceiver I could give away. It's a tech level 14 with a lot of crap on, built into it. I, I'd rather not part with it, but uh, if someone else has a cheaper one that they don't... I've got one. You what? I've got one. I'll give it up. So Jack's got one. He'll give it up. Yeah. So I, I would say that we have that brought to engineering and 
basically get back to our ship because I mean that's that's our biggest fear right now is that our if anything happens to our ship we're all screwed. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, so he takes Jack's transceiver and he says, "All right, I will head to the to the uh, head to engineering." He says, um, "I can't I can't make any promises that." she's going to contact you, but I will do my best and, uh, and try to convince her to contact you. I mean, um, you are really our only hope. Right. And I mean, given that there's a fear of contamination, I would think that she'd appreciate being able to talk through a transceiver rather than face to face. Yeah, that does make sense. So, <clears throat> So you are you guys going to go back to your ship and decon? Yes. Yes. Okay. No. No. Don't do it. No. No. W why wouldn't we? Assume that you sure your suits are dirty and uncontaminable. So basically, we get to go back on the ship one time. Well, it's like I said, the the airlock, uh, every airlock is going to have decontamination routine. Uh, ultraviolet light will will put this put these spores down. We've also determined that I mean, we with our scan, we determined that they are they are affected by energy, and so I mean, we could just burn our suits in the airlock. I mean, you know what I mean? It's you, you know, you, we we can apply fire to the outside of these vac suits to make sure that the, we <clears> burned <throat> off any spores. I I think maybe I should go either alone or with a part. I I'd go talk to the mission people if we're gonna, you know, wait on on a back and forth with the engineering. I'm coming if, with if, you. If, if they've got inoculations, you know that that'll require an actual physical interaction. It, if they had, a, I'm in a vac they, suit. If they had inoculations, they could begin administering them. Administering them. That's correct. That but, person that we discovered had zero brain activity. You could inoculate no. them all you want; it ain't gonna help. Correct. So you know, it's one of those things where I don't, I don't see the, I don't see the pro of it. I mean, the most number of people we can bring out with us is maybe a dozen. So, I mean, we're talking, there's oh, probably several I, hundred people here. I'm not going to agree to bring anybody out. I'm just going to go talk and see if I can get some inoculations. I mean, the, the medic in me would make me want to go try to handle that. I mean, if they're the doctors and they've been studying it, you know, they, they would also have better things on how to identify if we had the particles or the spores or anything like that. They, they would have equipment. If, if they're upset with the other factions, that's the only leverage they would also have, is to say that they've got inoculations. That is true. So, I mean, they might be completely full of shit. I mean, that's it's just... Right. It, you know what I mean? Well, I mean, whether I would, they're full of I would shit think, or not, it's it's just a it's just a chance. It, it's playing the, the setting that's been placed there. It, we have these three factions and... and in a, in a go-between guy so I, I would like to you know I'd like to try all of them before we you know do a deep commitment and if we can't undock then you know we have to we have to come up with some kind of plan uh, to that or they're going to light into us with these fucking laser beams so I mean that that stops us from doing any kind of Who, who's got control of the lasers that's uh, the bridge people. Well, the bridge people don't have control of the lasers anymore. Guns, yeah, so. guns. Uh, the gunnery sergeant locked them out and has taken manual control. Okay. So just a person, guns. But all, all of that is really controlled by engineering. It, I mean, and Trinance tells you, he, said, he, he just kind of <clears throat> laughs a little bit. He says... Guns is a little overly paranoid. Just, I, that I don't believe. Mean, I, I don't believe so. He I, said, I, frankly, in this situation, that paranoia is deserved. Yeah, he says she. He, he, that doesn't necessarily. She's paranoid, but that doesn't necessarily mean that she's wrong. But she, 
she has taken it upon herself to make sure that nobody leaves this ship because she is under the impression that if anybody uh, leaves this ship, there's a chance of contamination. And if that contamination gets to a populated world, it will literally take over that entire planet. <clears throat> so that that's kind of where she's at. That's why she's... Um, that's why she blew up the fuel depot. Um, you know, the captain is hell-bent on getting the ship back to civilization and getting his people rescued, but he says guns blew up the fuel depot to prevent that. Maybe we could do a spacewalk and and talk to the, the medical people there through, through even through a an airlock or, or something like that. That could be an option, yeah. And, and then we're not really being directly exposed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it'd be good to talk to guns. He says, he, he says, if you want to talk to guns, I can arrange that. Trinance oh. is kind of, kind of on friendly terms with almost everybody. I wouldn't say friendly terms with everybody. He's on, um, he's on f more or less friendly terms with everybody, um, but he he does say that the bridge faction is um, the most um, disagreeable and unreasonable of the three factions. The the captain at this point and his master at arms are completely pissed off that uh well one they're really mad at guns um because she blew up the fuel depot and two they're he's really pissed off with the engineering faction the mission faction they don't they don't really care that much about because the mission faction they're all scientists and doctors and eggheads so you know um, if they were able to do a, uh, you know, um, if they were able to come up with some kind of vaccine or a cure, then that's great. But the only reason why the mission faction is at odds with the bridge faction at all is because the three major factions are trying to hoard food and other resources. I guess it's understandable to an extent. Uh, yeah, I, I want to go. I'm going to go spacewalk over uh, to the science pods. Okay, is what I want to do. Uh, anyone that wants to come with me is welcome to. But I mean, the, I'm coming. Yeah, there's there's a low chance of getting exposed to spores out in zero g, and it's it, and we've seen this pod over there, and and so that's that's what I think I'd like to do is just go check that out. Okay. I'm going to stay with the ship. Okay. Uh, Jack, what are you doing? I'll stay with Sarda. Okay. So Sarda and Jack go back into the Eskaya, um, and are, and you're going through decon procedures, I take it? Yeah, yeah and, and any, any further, further, anything I can do to make that work better. <laughs> Uh, whether, well, like, say, you know, a propane torch, you know, to the outside of the vac. You know, what, <laughs> yeah. Anything we, anything we could do to make the, the decant, decontamination process work better would be best. Uh, I'm just going to try scanning everything for any side of spores before I before I open the airlock. Okay. Use, uh, yeah, use the Medikit's uh, scanner and just make sure that I, I feel it's you know that we've got the airlock completely decontaminated before I allow it, let it let open into our ship itself. Okay. So you uh, go through the decon procedure, and uh, you you are able to determine that it is um, it is successful. Um, Come on here. 
And I want to get back in the sh- and basically I'm gonna head to the bridge. It does look like the um, scout ship has an advanced life. So maybe we can try to see, differentiate between the different, um, it's got a, a life scanner analysis suite. Right. And so maybe try to see if I can't fine tune it now that we know the fungus part is what we're looking for. So you, uh, so, um, Bocephus and Hannibal, you go out onto the exterior of the ship. Um, both of you may use tether procedures. Right. Yes. Go ahead. And both of you can make um, um, athletics dexterity checks. Um, and you can, make, if you're if you're using tethering procedures, you can both make that with um, a boon. So roll three and take the two highest. All right. So I'll get a nine. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to figure out how to do that on this. So if you roll 3d6 plus your dex, if you have athletics dex, you can use that skill. Um, if not, you just add your dex modifier. So you got a five. Um, you're out on... <laughs> You are out on the hull, and Hannibal is has a slight problem. Um, not bad enough that he loses, uh, you know, his grip and is hanging by the tether, but he's having a problem with the the line keeps getting caught up, and it, it it's slow going. But you do eventually make it to the Ford uh, Ops Pod. And, but you pass over these two pods first. Um, as you pass over the, uh, the central pod, the main science pod as it is, um, Bocephus and Hannibal can make a recon plus intellect check. got a five. Oh, okay so hannibal got it yeah so the the this is the aft science pod <clears throat> this is the main science pod and the two things that you notice um <clears throat> so the two things that you immediately notice is that any windows that look out from these science pods and and the the uh, main science pod has a large um um the large observatory. So, I mean, there's there's windows all over these pods. You can't see into those science pods. <clears throat> they are there is fungal growth all over the inside of the windows. But you make your way to the Ford pod and you can see that there are people moving around in there. And one of those people you see if I can get my, I can brain, get my brain to, uh, to uh, do the alphabet. The alphabet. see this woman walking around in the Ford uh, science pod and you see a number of other uh, people they're all um, moving around doing sciencey things they're checking things in petri dishes Um, they are um, you know 
looking through microscopes, running uh, scanners, you know, um, they're doing <clears throat> a number of medical type things. And on one of the medical beds, you see this. Somebody is working on one of these shamblers. Okay. Is there... It, uh... it doesn't seem to be too worried about contamination. Yeah. I mean, rubber gloves don't look like enough. <laughs> She doesn't even look like she's wearing a mask. Has she never been in a pandemic? Yeah. And is there any kind of airlock or anything around here visible? There is. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead to the console of the uh, of the airlock. Is there like a keyboard where I could type and stuff on that? And maybe something I can ring it, ping it? Uh, no, there's not really a keyboard or anything, but there is a, um, there is, it, it's basically a very simple, you know, open close routine. And it doesn't seem that the airlock is, it, the door's not locked. You could press the button and open the airlock and cycle it from the inside. I'll go ahead and press the button and cycle it. We can go in from the inside. Okay. We will pick this up next week with uh, Luke and uh, Wes going into the F uh, Ford Ops mod <clears throat> and uh, meeting with uh, the mission officer, Jarla Klein, and finding out if there is actually a vaccine or a cure being worked on. Yeah. And I will see you guys next week on Friday at 7 p.m. All right. Sweet. Thanks. Had a lot of fun. All right, take care. Yep, have a good night, guys. Yep.